Good morning, everybody. Let's get this stream going. Uh, my name is Nick Larson. Welcome to my stream. Uh, today, we're going to get back to working on the Slack bot that we are building. Uh, we made a lot of progress last week, and I think hopefully we can wrap this up this week because I don't really want to work on it for too much longer. It's just one of those things. Want to get it done, want to get it out the door, want to stop worrying about it. Uh, let's pull it up. Let's see where we're at. <clears throat> First off, let's go take a look at it. We want to go to Slack. Pick morale bot. No, that's not what I wanted. I want pick morale dev. There we go. All right. So here is the actual Slack where this thing is installed. And let's kind of push this to the side and let's pull up some Visual Studio and let's get going. And this is me writing, yay. Let's go to the actual open recent pick morale bot. Okay, great. All right. So what do we have going on here is quite a bit. Uh, first off, this is hosted currently on Azure. Uh, I have a free tier right now or I have some free credit because I have a Visual Studio subscription so this is like a dev thing and then as soon as this gets done I will pass this on to whoever is going to actually install it and I'm not going to worry about paying for it. Um, Alright, a couple of the things that this should do. Where did we get last time? Where are we trying to get today? Oh wait, you know what? This is one thing I wanted to do real fast. Let's just be good citizens. Let's go to um, Actually, open this up over here. GitHub. GitHub.com. And then I wanted to put in an issue. No way to delete. Okay, so now this is the tool for the highlighter, which I'll go ahead and throw on there. Twitch highlighter is now connected. All right, so if you want to highlight lines, you can use the function uh, bang line and then the number, something like 11, and you can see it highlights the line. And the issue that we have here is once this line is highlighted, if I start changing it, the highlight doesn't work. All right, you see it only highlighted what was originally there. And I think the same thing is true. Oh, no, okay, so if you push it down then it gets rid of it oh that's live share where's highlighter oh man twitch highlighter doesn't have a side thing anymore or maybe it's because I don't have any highlights let's try that one more time bang line 12 no what happened to twitch highlighter uh, ex command palette? I don't know. That's really weird. Is there a limit to how many things show up over here? Ah, whatever. I'm not really sure. Whatever. It's not super critical. Um, but anyway, the point is, you know, if we uh, start fixing this, highlight her. There we go. Okay, it works if you make it smaller. Oh, and that is weird. See, now it added back in this, like, number 11. Interesting. These are just bugs. Let's put these on here. Uh, and I think the easiest way to show a bug, first off, is bang, line, bang, 11. We want to undo that one, and then uh, we want to do bang line, bang 12, and then I want to just show an example here. I want to show an example. The way that we are going to show an example is we're going to record it. Xbox. Okay. I know that there is a way to do this recording. Okay. Windows.
screen recorder built-in screen recorder that you might not be aware of just what's the hotkey windows key alt r windows key alt r there we go all right now what i want to do is say oh you know what this isn't really cropping it is it okay so if in my chat which i'll just put right here no don't do that to me if in my chat i use bang line 11 and then i start adding some text adding some text it doesn't actually increase it uh, and then also if i return it goes to the next line it just sort of wipes out there so it does get smaller but it doesn't get bigger i don't know if that's a feature or not and then also if i delete the line entirely oh weird it brought it all the way back that's insane what okay so if i go like that and then i go like that okay so there is a little bit of something going on there that's super interesting let's just clean that up okay i'm just gonna mark it as an issue for now bang line bang 11. okay so we're gonna add a couple of issues which is contributing guidelines allow you viewer to specify um, don't allow other users to unhighlight someone else's highlight if statement certain files should not be allowed uh, share line highlighting across VS code sessions light up tab feature idea list okay so these are going to be issues and we can stop this don't actually want that um, the first one is going to be highlights don't increase in size they only decrease permissions highlighter name none of these appear okay um, What's the way to do this? One, two, three, one, two, three. Line 10. Then on line 10, add some space inside the highlight, and the highlight does not increase in size. It seems like it should always highlight the entire entire line even as it is edited to contrast this the highlight does get smaller as you delete text from the line and if you add text back in after deleting some it will continue to increase back to the size it was when the highlight was created okay that's it let's add another one now which is um create a new issue highlights don't travel with new line edits okay don't allow viewers don't allow the same user okay same idea bang line 10 all right 
once a line is highlighted, adding some new lines above it will not undo, will not shift the highlight down with it. Instead, it leaves an empty line highlight. Instead, it leaves an empty line highlight, which will highlight the next thing that ends up passing through that line number. Expected behavior when new lines are added above a highlight, the highlight travels with the new lines. And in the case of multi-line highlights, the size of the highlight expands to include the added lines. All right, that's sort of what I expect. I don't know, we'll just mark them as issues. We'll see what goes on. Uh, we can now clean this off. Great. Okay, let's take a look at uh, what got done last time. And then let's talk about what we wanna actually accomplish this time and get it all wrapped up here. Which is, uh, okay. Last time we pair programmed with Alpha Geek, uh, which was awesome, and we got it to respond to the needs more messages and to needs more help. Um, and then it also replies on the thread that the person asked for the thing on. So let's see a little demo of that. So if I say um, needs more help, this thing should reply right there in there and give me a list of all of the things that I can say. And it might be a little bit better to sort these, I think, to make them a little bit easier to find one and also to make them so that we can just copy and paste them. Yep, this is supposed to support markdown also. It's putting them on new lines, but it does, and I don't really like this star. I don't know how to go about solving that. Probably not gonna end up worrying about it. Reply to the room as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, updating this message real fast, just to wrap that up. And that is in needs more. So, okay, so Slack is our API wrapper, which we could probably have gone and just grabbed an NPM package instead of writing this ourselves. And it would have been great. Uh, we didn't do that. Instead, uh, what we did is write our own little wrapper for just the ones that we're using. Then we have this thing, which is our actual tool. Oh no, I'm sorry, this is the Slack API. That's right, this is the Slack API for actually updating the stuff and sending it on. Uh, this is our tool that is our bot and the way that it handles things. And then this is um, how we wire up the bot to catch the webhooks. And those are basically the three files that we need. And this is just a little express app. Okay, so in this case, we have needs more JS. What we want to do is uh, in the help function, we want to, we want to put needs more whatever. And then we also want to have, I think maybe we ought to go like help. Something like that is actually a good idea. No, no, we'll just stick with it like this. Um, and then we'll say, uh, okay, handle streamers, great. With image handle help. Okay, so this says, build list from needs more commands. Great. Build list from, 
All right, I think what we want to do here is we want to sort the keys so that they show up in order. And then the other thing that we want to do is, I think maybe we're just going to try and get rid of this, to be honest with you. We're going to have uh, needs more, and then we're going to put that in there. Okay, so let's see how to sort things in JavaScript. Let me just Google that real fast. JavaScript sort array of strings. Sort, great. Okay, so we just call sort. And there we go. That ought to handle all of the stuff that we expect. Now this is the most painful part of the whole thing, which is we have to actually make this work. How did we do that? We went to wrestle it. We use it without. Okay, we are hitting our local so that we don't have to publish each time. And then we are testing by saying needs more streamers. And in this case, we want needs more help. You know what, I think I'm going to get into the habit of actually just pushing today because I don't like the idea of going through this. I like the idea of actually just interacting with it and telling whether or not it works. We do need to set up a bunch of tests um, so that we can run through, you know, there. it seems like whenever we've been making changes so far, we have been making changes that affect sort of a lot of things, more stuff than I probably want it to. And ideally, we just have a little test suite that we run and fire off um, after every time that we run it, which would be great, but I don't have that right now. And I also not a hundred percent sure how we would get the results of the test because it has to be on production in order to get the responses anyway. I don't know. Pushing to production just feels like the only way to test it, honestly. But we should still have a test suite that just tested in production, like a, you know, needs more dash test or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, push to production. That's what we should do. Pick morale bot commit needs more all right sort help messages sort help responses response and show full command All right, it takes a hot minute to push to this, which is another reason why I don't like doing it. But again, it's just much easier to interact with the thing in Slack. I think like the development workflow for Slack, at least the way that we have it set up currently is just not that great. I have to figure out a better way. Today is not that day. Today is more about just getting to the end, getting it to do the thing we want it to do. Come on, Azure. You can do it. I believe in you. Let's go take a look and see if we can see the output. I know there's a way to look at the logs. I know there's a way to look at the logs. There we go. Application logs are switched off on uh, log stream. Oh, uh, wait. So you have to save this. Boom, save. Shrink that. Go to the log stream. Okay, great. Now we can actually see what's going on. Okay. Close that. We're done with that. Shrink that. We're done with that. And now, if we say needs more help, needs more help. Oh. 
Hey, all right. Look at that. Okay, why does it reply twice? That one's frustrating. I think it's because when the server comes back up, it takes so long that the the API call, like the the message from Slack gets delayed, so Slack resends it. Like that's my best guess because it only ever happens on the first one. Needs more help. Let's just do that again. Okay, great. And we do see that they are ordered, and we do see that we have the the full command. Oh, it'd be kind of cool if you could just click on it. Nah, you can't do that because you need to reply on a an actual image. Okay. Okay, so back to the to-do list. Uh, we have now taken care of that. Only respond to needs more whatever. It does respond to that. Okay, so now there was uh, needs more streamers. And what this should do is send it an image. Great, it sent it an image that we made last time on stream. Okay, so we have done this. We have done this. We have done this. Now we want to reply to the room. Okay. Slack API reply to room. Okay. That's not what I want to do. So in the thing where we reply to the room, we basically need, um, so the Slack API needs to be like reply to the room as well. And in this case, this channels, I believe, also needs to have something that sends it to the room also send to general how is this replying to a thread that's a great question file auto url channels channel um, I want to say it's in here, reply details, so Slack API reply details. That's right, thread TS. That's how you reply to a thread. How do you also send to, okay, also, okay. All right, Slack API also send to channel. Message and file threads. Threads let you respond directly to a message in a channel. That's not what I want. I want the API. It's got to be in this post message thing. Channel, private, group, or I am channel to send a message to can be an encoded ID or a name. See below for more details. All right. Provide another, to make this a reply, avoid using a reply's TS value, use its parent instead. Unfurl links. 
username. Okay, great. Attachments. That's the response. Formatting messages as user. Reply broadcasts. Message threading. Okay, so reply broadcast. Let's try this. Reply. I'm just going to copy and paste it. I think this is what we're looking for now, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, no. Threading. Here it is. Post to a public channel to a private group. Reply broadcast. I, th I think this is what we're looking for. I don't know. Okay. So I want to say reply broadcast whenever I call upload file. So basically I'm just going to put in true here. I think that'll do it. I mean, this is like sort of the whole point of the thing is that it needs to announce it. And this is a little bit different than the way that the tool worked at our company where like there were no threads. Everything was just, you know, flat in line. You could reply to another message, and as you highlight over it, like as you hover your mouse over it, it would actually highlight them in CSS, the other stuff on on the, you know, that was in the thread. So you could kind of view it, but in this case, there is explicit threading, but we want to send it back to the main one so everybody sees it, because, like, that's the point. It's supposed to be funny, haha. -ha. Um, so let's just see if this works, I guess. Okay. Enable attempt. Attempt to enable um, sending to sending images to channel as well. Okay. Let's push it, build it. And hopefully it works. I'm not sure if I feel confident about this or not. Like, there's been a lot of things with the Slack API that have really just been completely unintuitive because they don't map to things that are like on the clients that are, you know, that are already available. It's been it's been a little frustrating. But it is what it is. Okay, let's try this one more time. I'm gonna try my hardest not to look at the keyboard today, but I look at the keyboard all the time. And when I have this microphone in front of my face, I'm like always like, oh, I gotta look around. So if you see me doing that, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at my keyboard because I don't know how to type very well. Uh, so now this should be, needs more help. Great. No, 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 no. Stop. Pause. Crap, what did I do? I did not recognize that this is from a bot. Okay, we need to stop this from happening. And the way that we're going to do that pause okay what I need is the message oh that's crazy username TS root crap all right, so what's happening? P 
previous message. All right, so I need to ignore thread broad. No, I need to not ignore. Th yeah, I do. I need to ignore thread broadcast. Um, and this is going to be in the needs more should handle. Slack needs more handle needs more okay if this is a match okay due to a high volume we are not displaying some messages well thank you for that I appreciate that great so let's kick this back up okay great that has decided to stop because I have made a mistake no it hasn't decided to stop what I want to do is say if payload and now I need to come right back to this payload dot previous message no if payload dot event If payload.event Hmm. There is like a should handle thing. Slack request.body. If not payload.event, if payload.challenge Otherwise, for each one of these handlers and the handler comes from here, which is needs more dot register with handlers collection needs more dot register okay collection prompt so it runs that and then it says the handler is reply utils great reply utils that's where it's going to be input event should reply okay if event dot subtype event event dot subtype no not subtype dot message and event dot message dot bot ID return false. So what this is saying is if there is a message and there is a bot ID then return false event dot message dot bot ID so we're not replying to messages from bots that's sort of what I'm getting at here although that's kind of 
kind of crappy per se. I really don't want it to respond to itself, but I don't want to hard code this bot ID because the bot ID is going to be different per each one. And I don't have any, I, I haven't set up any way for it to grab the bot ID for itself. So I'm going to put that on the do list, get own bot ID, get own bot ID and ignore messages from self. Uh, but for the time being, I am just going to ignore all bots. I believe. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can get this. Oh, no, I want to reset this one. Reset. Okay. Okay. Ignore all messages from bots. Push. Push. It's also interesting that it actually found help because it stopped at the end of the line. If it didn't stop at the end of the line and it found a new line, then this problem wouldn't have happened. So I don't know if that's another way that we should go about it. Or if we should have the bot inspect it line by line. I don't know, edge case. Almost certainly I'm going to just ignore it. Almost certainly I'm just gonna ignore it. Okay, uh, let's see now this thing. So let's kick this back up. Let's kick this back up. It seems to have slowed down. Which hopefully means that the new bot is no longer doing dumb stuff. Also, why is this thing spitting out? To here. Okay, well, the good news is that this thing replied to the actual stuff, but why did it spit it out to here? Okay. Reply details. Oh, there they come. All right, this is it. I'm not sure if that worked. We're going to have to go to a new page. We're going to have to go back to general. Okay, it's still spitting out tons and tons and tons, so it's not stopping. That's awful. Okay, did it stop? No. All right. Seems to have stopped. Seems to have chilled out. Let's try this one more time. Needs more streamers. An application has thrown the first argument must be one of type string or buffer. Goodness me. Okay. You change one thing and everything's broken. You change one thing, reply broadcast. Reply details. You know what, let's not put this here. That's just a terrible idea because it seems to be catching everything. And instead where we send the message for the image, I don't want post message to get it. Instead what I want is
this one to get it. So we want to say reply attributes dot reply broadcast equals true. So only in the case that that's there should it do that. And now, is there a way to clear this? There's not really, is there? That would be way too easy. Whatever. Okay. And then the other thing that we wanted to do is make sure that we don't reply to bots. Why did it start replying to bots all of a sudden? Such a weird question. Why did it start replying to bots all of a sudden? Channel payload. Not 100% sure. Uh, I just want to see if we're like back to a working state here. Okay, remove reply broadcast from reply utils. And then the streamers thing broke, which was kind of frustrating. So I'm wondering if like, Oh, you know what? That was post message. It's how do I? Okay, so I don't want post message. All right, so I want upload file and I want to know how to do it on upload file. Upload channels. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. So, so I'm already sending it to the right channel. How hmm. Okay, so maybe we just don't do these. Maybe we just don't do these as replies. Yeah. Okay, so we just don't do these as replies. Okay. Let's try that instead. Um, don't send images as replies always post to main channel yeah 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 all right finish building that one let's try this again Okay. Need 
needs more streamers. Okay, so we got the image. Great. Okay, so we got the image to come back to the main one. And then what we said was, uh, just got to see if it breaks. Needs more help. Okay, and so we get our one here. Needs more help, needs more streamers. All right, so it sends it back to the main room. I think I think that's really the way to go. And then if we like reply to this, if we're like start a thread, needs more streamers, that should send to the main room. Great needs more streamers okay okay I feel I feel okay about that I feel okay about the way that that works I feel okay about the way that that works great okay let's see okay all right so now now let's uh, again take a look at, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that that works as intended now. Send ephemeral message to users who need help. Uh, yeah, that's right. Ephemeral, ephemeral, post ephemeral. So the reason you use post ephemeral is it doesn't fill up the real message thing with everybody. It'll just send a message to the person who wants it. So I think the way that we do that, the text of the message to send, I wanna say it's just the same. Yeah, I want to say this works just the same. Get out of here. Yeah. Delete. I don't... Come on. Whatever. Okay. Text. The ID of the user who will receive the ephemeral message. The user should be in a channel specified by the channel argument. All right, let's try that. So when we send a message, it has a user ID on it. Okay, let's go to the Slack API. Let's go to the Slack API. And in addition to post message, we want one called post ephemeral. And uh, we'll just copy that. Post ephemeral. Again, additional attributes. Okay. Header. And this one goes to post ephemeral. We're just going to copy the whole thing. Okay. And then we have the rest of this is exactly the same, only we want to add in a user. Channel user is payload.event. We're looking over here, payload.event dot user and then we need post ephemeral ah post ephemeral okay 
And then when we send this message in needs more for help, handle help, uh, instead of post message, we want dot post ephemeral. Post ephemeral console sending ephemeral message to Slack, and we want to send that over. Okay, probably don't even need these console logs anymore. Okay. All right, we have changed this to be post ephemeral. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. Help sends ephemeral message. Okay. All right, let's get this to finish building and then let's try the needs more help one time. I think that's the other thing is like doing it this way shouldn't run into that problem. Needs more help. This thing should eventually get a message. Uh, stream terminated due to timeout. Well, that's not going to help us, is it? Pause. Start. How about go away, come back. There we go. Needs more help. I am unsure where ephemeral messages go. Needs more help. Pick morale bot. General, I am I'm really unsure what to do in this case. I thought that was going to send me a message. I don't know where they show up. Let's just read through it. This method posts an ephemeral message, which is visible only to the assigned user in the specific public channel, private channel, or private conversation. Ephemeral message delivery is not guaranteed. The user must be currently active in Slack and a member of the specified channel. By nature, do not persist across reloads. Yep, going right back to what we just had. Just going to revert that. Revert. Okay, whatever. All right, S screw that. Okay. Uh, that is a big important thing to do. We're not gonna worry about it right now. 
get own bot ID and ignore messages from self, watchdog to restart. Okay, so the stuff that we want to accomplish today is uh, given this streamers, given an image that is replied to modify the image with the overlay. All right, that's the goal. That's what we're gonna do. Only took us, uh, yeah, 57 minutes to get there. Great. Okay, how are we going to go about doing that? We are going to say needs more, and right now we already have a handle that takes in the overlay with image, and then um, takes in handle image, and all it does is upload the file. So what we want to do here is say, what we want to do here instead is, I want to, Upload the file. What do I want to do? I want to modify the image. Okay, well, first things first. If you reply to an image, we need to get the image. Okay. How do we get the image? Let's go take a look. In here, we're going to reply to this and say, needs more streamers okay what that did was say this is a message on a thread ts so it was a reply so what we have is a no that's a parent user id what we need is the thread TS okay get the message that was replied to okay slack get the message that was replied to slack API Okay, channels dot replies. And what do we pass this? A thread TS. And the response Okay. Sure, let's try that. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so token channel thread TS. Okay. So let's have this function called const. Um, Maybe we go straight, maybe we go straight to here. Maybe we go straight to the API. All right, so channels.replies. Slack API, oh, Slack API, and we want channels.replies. Just copy and paste one of these. Uh, channel replies and this just takes in a payload yeah that just is going to take in a payload
and what we want to do is say channel we don't want text we want thread ts event dot channel okay so uh, reply utils nope it's in here what we want is reply details really what we want is just this thread ts payload.event dot thread ts I think that's probably just the one we want because this will always be a reply well or yeah that one okay and in this one we have no additional attributes so we don't need to worry about that. And really all we need to do is say, um, yeah, we'll just leave that like that, whatever. Okay, this right here will get us the replies. But I want to actually return Okay. Post. Okay, so now we need a callback. Options. Um, let's do callback. Okay, so that is, ah, I see, log error. Okay, so I think what we want is a promise. I think we just return this. Does this return? Okay. Uh, NPM request promise. That's not really what I want. Request, that's what I want. And then, so you have a git post on. Uh, we're using request dot post. Quest. Function. Okay, so we have log error is the thing where we just ignore the response. Log error. Okay, so I guess in this case, what we're gonna do is say something like, uh, 
you pass it a callback or you just treat it as a promise? No, we're going to pass it a callback. Yeah, we're going to pass it a callback. Okay, let's just do that. Channel replies. This is going to be options dot on response. We're just going to say callback. Will that do what I expect it to do? On. And then we're going to have Okay. Sure. The other option is just replace log error with callback. All right, this is a really bad API. I just want to get it working. So we're just gonna have this thing called a callback. We're gonna go make channel replies available. Slack API equals channel replies. Uh, and really, and needs more, I want to just say something like, um, Slack API dot channel replies of payload. And then we need to pass it a function error response body. And then we want to say something like uh, var details. You know what needs to happen is we need to move this into here. OK. And this is why promises would be better, because we could just chain this. OK. So we have this overlay. And then what we want to do for now is just say console.log error, console.log response, console.log body, so that we can actually get that stuff out of there. Uh, I want to say that the body is going to contain whatever is in this. So. It's not clear to me whether or not the first one in this array is always going to be there. Is always going to be like the main message. I think what we want to do is really just see what comes out for now. Yeah, I think we just want to see what comes out. Not entirely sure if this is going to work. OK, so this is awful. To do, this is awful. Make it more like promises. OK. I just want to get this committed in. Uh... All 
Okay. See what comes out of it. Try to get original message when posting a reply with Try to get original message. Push. It's taking a little bit. Okay. Deployment finished. Hooray. Okay, I'm going to reply to this message with needs more streamers. And the idea being that I want to see something show up in the logs that shows me okay okay something crazy has happened deprecation warning Okay, so this was a reply. And then I attempted. Okay. D did I get that right? Channel dot replies thread TS oh, stop thread TS thread TS so really what I want to do really what I want to do is send this to slack and see what comes back. Okay. Um, Red TS. User. Pause this. User. Wait, request channels dot replies. No, I want channel. Okay, that's what I want. Channel and channel is this one. And then I want to add a header. Slack API called authorization. Okay. Great. And then I want to say authorization. And the value is going to be bearer space. 
And then we're going to go to my Slack bot, OAuth, config. Okay. Let's send that. No response. Oh, because I shouldn't have sent that to localhost. I should have sent that to this one. Oh, look at that. Missing scope. What? Channels.history. Okay, so I think we need to go to this. Okay. Slack API. API.slack your apps this one add features bots we have a bot um event subscriptions Add a bot user event. Channels history. Group file created channels history um Let's try that. I'm just Googling this. Slack API. For people having this problem in the future, your integrated bot has full access to the Slack API, whereas a bot in a Slack app does not, as it will be used publicly. When you successfully When you successfully finish OAuth 2, you should get two tokens, user access tokens and bot token. The user token is used to read history from any channels or groups. The bot access token is used to write them. Oh, that is sort of frustrating. Okay, let's go see if I can find that. Copy, comma, slack, user, OAuth, key. Let's try that. OK. Uh, slack API, slack, user. OAuth key. Okay, let's try this. That's not what I wanted. Copy. Try that again. Still getting that. Still getting that. Missing scope. A 
Okay, I'm looking here. Yes, if you found a better way of going about it. Since you did not mention it, you also need to specify all required scopes on the admin page for your Slack app under OAuth and permission scopes. OAuth and permissions. Scopes. Select permission scopes. Access users public channels. Channels history. And there you go, save changes. You've changed the permission scopes of your app uses. Please here to reinstall. Reinstall. Authorize. New tokens. New tokens? Maybe not. Let's go back and see. Send it again. Channel not found. Channel not found. Channel not found. I... Let's copy this again. Let's paste it again. Okay, well, you know, it's a better message. Uh, let's go back to that config, make sure that I have updated these all correctly. That appears to be the same. I have no doubt in my mind this one's going to be the same. Okay, those are the same. Um, now what I want to do is get another message. Let's go back to the logs. Yeah, I mean, let's just try this again. Not entirely sure what happened here. So I have reinstalled this thing. I have given a new permission that gives me access to channels history. Now I'm just getting a channel not found. I'm wondering if that's because the bot has never seen a message from that channel. Or if I have to go back to Slack and like re-add the bot. General. How would I add a bot back apps? Whoops. Okay, pick morale bot. That's the one. Add users, keyboard shortcut, your files, channel settings, invite new members, view channel details, notification, oh, add an app. Pick morale. How do I see who's in a room? Okay, the app is in here. Okay, let's just uh, pull the old needs more help. Okay, great. You sent me something. It worked. My logs were paused. Let's try that again. Needs more help. This is crapping out. Um, can I try it now? Channel not found. Really? How about we do this? No, that's an event TS. I want a thread TS, and that is the thread TS. All right, maybe my logs got turned off again. 
No, they appear to be on. Let's go back to the stream. Connecting. Um, let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and... Under here, we are sending this with the thread TS payload event channel. Okay, needs more, needs more, not help. Handle image. All right, so channel replies. You know what, I think for now, I'm just gonna put this out here. We're just going to have this be a log. Yep. Okay. Let's try checking it in. Okay, try again. Now that we have permissions. Push that. Wait for it to build. I am going through all of this in my head again, and I'm just like, it's so frustrating. I thought today was just going to be easy. We we're going to grab the image, and then it's like, it's just not easy. Okay. Right now, what we want to do is reply to an image with a needs more streamers. And the goal, okay, something broke. Receive the request, ensure. All right, what we saw was a needs more streamers to this thread TS. In this channel, using the, the app authorization channel not found what go try this one and we get nothing okay why is channel not found <sighs> all right so this is the right way to go about this we get a channel not found. But I am just over the moon about how this is the only channel ID that I have anywhere. Let's just try the original timestamp. Still channel not found. Event TS? I'm just guessing at this point. So that's not clear. Great, channel not found. Okay, back to the Slack API. Slack bot. 
Uh, what are we looking for now? Error. Channel not found. And this is on what function? Channels.replies. Channels.replies. Only works with public channels. We would encourage the use of our conversations API instead. Conversations.replies. Okay. Conversations.replies. This one needs channel TS of a thread's parent message. The best that I've got for a parent message is thread TS, which is this one. Right here. Channel not found. Bonkers. Completely bonkers. Isn't yes. Honestly, have no idea. That's needs more streamers. Let's just do needs more help at the very beginning. Let's go to the top level and let's say needs more help. Okay, great. That one went off. We have needs more help. Here is the TS. Starting to get too many things going on. Post message. Okay, that's the one we're actually trying to get to work. I can't copy and paste this channel name any harder. Is it channels? Did I spell it wrong? I spelled it wrong, didn't I? No, it's channel. Thread TS. This one is just TS. Okay, so maybe I put that wrong. Channel not found. Channel not found. At this point, I'm just like frustrated enough with it to want to stop working on this project altogether. Slack API get text of parent message. Finding message threads in the wild. Uh, 
Okay. The dispatch of reply messages is also typical. Events emit signifying the original message updated status. Slack will send a message subtype event, message replied. This event is about the parent message. So maybe that's what I want is message replied. This event is about the parent message. But I don't see anything about, I don't see anything about how Retrieving message replies, conversation dot replies. To retrieve replies to a specific message, regardless of whether it's from a public or private channel, direct message or otherwise. Conversations dot replies. Coming webhooks. Posting your reply back to the channel. I don't know. Really, I feel really defeated here. Feel really defeated. Pause. Let's go take a look. This needs more. It needs more help at the top level. It needs more help. That looks like a channel name. Is that the channel name that I'm using? Great question. Yes, of course it is. 300, yeah. I mean, honestly, Honestly, okay, we're not using channels.replies, we're using conversations.replies. We have the, the event TS, we have the channel name, I have the bearer, I have the content type, I click send, I get channel not found.
Slack API. Channel not found. Conversations dot replies. Detect a direct message versus a message in a channel. If the channel ID begins with a C, it's a public channel. A D, it's a DM, and a G, it's either a private channel or a multi-person DM. However, these values aren't set in stone and could change at some point. I think I think I am not enjoying writing for the Slack API. I just want to get a response. Authentication token bearing required scopes. Channel TS. Uh, channel not found. OAuth and permissions. Channels history, channel not found. Slack API, channel not found. Channels info. Channels info. You cannot send I uh, like invite more people. Pick morale bot. Yeah, come on in. Already in this channel. Freaking great. The bot is in the channel. The channel ID works for posting messages but doesn't for getting what are some other things I can do Access information about a user's direct messages. Modify user's direct messages. Post to specific channels in Slack. I don't know. I don't know. And I think I, think I really have had enough of it. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just not enjoying it. Like, it was fun when we got it to post images, but now that I can't get the actual image that was posted, I can't even get the parent message. I'm really just sort of, really just sort of frustrated with it, to be honest with you.
So that's it. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna scrap this project. I mean, gave it a good try. To do. Get message that was replied to. Conversations dot replies. I don't know. I'm gonna have to contact Slack about this one. I just honestly don't know what's going on. So that's gonna be it. And actually, I am gonna wrap this up for today. Uh, thank you everybody for coming and checking it out. I think uh, starting tomorrow we're gonna get back on the AI stuff. Um, because I've had enough of this Slack stuff. So that's going to be it. Thanks again, everybody, for joining, and hopefully I will see you all tomorrow. Just going to check this in real fast. Update to do with complaints. It's like, this is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to have, you know, it's supposed to be enjoyable. But it's really not when you're working with an API that is just poorly documented, doesn't document the errors that happen other than to tell you that you don't have access, has no way of giving you information. You know, there's there's nothing in the response indicating what the problem is, like where where the disconnect is. It just says channel not found as if this channel doesn't exist. And it's like I get that because you don't want to be able to spam for channel names, but like, it's a bot. Just give it, give it some info. Why, why is this so hard? Just really don't know. All right, that's it. Um, see y'all tomorrow. Thanks a lot.